Hello and thank you for joining my channel today. My name is Cheryl Wilson. I'm an abstract artist and this is an unusual painting. It is a painting that I got at a charity shop. I'm calling it Convergence and it is extremely mixed media but it is a canvas board and it came already in the frame and I popped the canvas board out and it already had a painting on it and I repurposed it. I gave it a new home. And on here are papers. They're all handmade papers. Um, there's a handmade um, painting on a piece of cotton. There is some cheesecloth that I hand painted and um, then I made the boat out of handmade paper. So it's it's a lot of handmade, uh, personalized uh, mixed media that I've added to this to make a, uh, like a seascape. And I deliberately wanted the background to be a very moody type of a background. And so I hope you enjoy the video. And um, I would really love it if you gave me a thumbs up and uh, let me know you were here. Send me a comment if you do landscapes or seascapes in an abstract way, um, I'd uh, love to see your work too. So without further ado, let's get into the video. wanted to do a video on um, talking about the creation of this painting and and I want to show you how I'm going to create another landscape or in this case it will be a, a, a seascape. This started out as I got this at the Goodwill it's a like a canvas board with a weave on it and it comes in a nice frame and there were three of them and they just seemed to be um you know bounced around nobody really wanted them and i wanted to give them a home but i wanted to create my art on them and make it mine so this is when i created this and i used uh, handmade papers that i had made I used um, pieces of, um, this back here is just a piece of um, canvas. I used some uh, cheesecloth. Which is, I got a big Thing of cheesecloth and I'll show you how I stain it to the color I want and just adding paint and gluing it down and um, I painted the frame and so I'm going to just take you through that process of how I created this particular landscape and how I'm going to create it here on this painting and I've already taken the board out of the frame and I already painted the background and I'm looking at this to be almost a very moody uh, seascape out in the ocean and so I've pulled some of my papers that I've made and these are quite big so I probably won't use those some smaller gray looking um, this has got some real pretty blues on it I like that this has got some real pretty um, colors on it some of the same coloring and a couple of the pieces that I've already pulled because I was thinking of um, maybe using some rocks maybe off the coast of new um new england these could be the rocks portray the rocks in the sea i grabbed that kind of gray looking uh paper 
and um, part of that. This is all handmade papers that I've made. Uh, this is a piece of canvas uh, that has the blues on it, and I love the gold. So I may, I don't know, maybe I'll paint the frame gold. So I thought about putting these on. There's some rocks. And then I thought maybe having something um, like maybe a boat. And then here's another piece of uh, paper on watercolor paper. Kind of putting that there and seeing where this goes. Um, maybe bring this down a little bit so it's not in the middle of the canvas. But this is how I create a lot of this is how I create a lot of my landscapes. So I just start with this is actually very thin watercolor paper. This is probably a mixed media paper. And I usually have a couple sheets sitting beside me and just did some circles here. Um, just did some swipes with the paintbrush when I was finish painting with something, I always use a piece of paper to wipe my paintbrush on, or I will deliberately make papers. Here's another little piece, and then I save the scraps, because these little scraps of paper are great for just adding into when you do your, your landscapes. And then I will take um, pieces of, like when I cut the canvas when I'm making my canvas. I'll cut pieces off the canvas and then I will paint them. So that's what that's what this is. Um, actually this is a piece, what this is actually is a piece of um, like I had an old uh, king size white sheet and I just ripped it up and I use them as my rags and some of them turn out to be really beautiful. Uh, I will use these maybe in a journal or I'll use these in my art, large pieces. Um, I get commissions for paintings and they want to see a lot of texture, unusual texture. So uh, sometimes I will crinkle this up and add it, but that's what this piece is, is actually a piece of that. Um, and then I added it to the other painting, and then here's just a piece I cut off. This is just, it was a large watercolor that I did. And um, I just pulled, I ripped pieces off. Um, this is beautiful, it's got drippy water here, and uh, sometimes the papers will come from a paper I'll have beside me when I'm just getting um, the, the brush you know, the rest leftover paint, or it will come from a painting that I've made that I need that color, like <clears throat> that blue would look really pretty in here. So that's kind of where I get my inspiration. Uh, and this has nothing to do with the extra marks I may make. So let me <clears throat> just get started in creating this. I thought I'd bring you along with me on the journey. Um, don't know where this is going to go, but um, I thought that this would be kind of a fun uh, video to um, film for you as I'm going through the process. So I'm going to go get some of my supplies and um, I will be right back. To get started, <clears throat> I've got my gel. That's what I'll use to glue these down on. I have some brushes 
just assorted. You can tell I, I, I really use my brushes. Um, yep, these are, some of this is kind of hard. So, I mean, the different brushes, I mean, I don't throw my brushes away. I will use them no matter what shape they're in. Um, cut them to make unusual marks. Say I got tired of this one, I would cut into this. Some paints. And I wanted to show you right up front how I stain my cheesecloth. This is a huge piece of cheesecloth. So I'm going to cut some of it. And I'm going to put a plastic underneath this. So that I can move it. <clears throat> I'll put that there so you see it. So the first thing I do is you can either dip this in water or you can just um, spray this. So I'm going to do a spray. And then, since I'm doing blues, and this is this is high flow. This is um, like an indigo um, type of a color. Love this color. Very very deep blue. Can spray some more. Let it bleed into each other. Let's add some more. it bleed. Let's add some white. I'm almost out of my white high flow. I'm going to have to get more, so let's see if I have any left in here. i got some left. So let's... And then when that's dry, <clears throat> what I'll do is I will add some gold to the top. Gold is a little bit thicker. So I'll add that when it dries. But let me see if I can get any yellow out. These, these tops, I have to get a hold of golden on a periodic basis and say, can you send me more tops? Because no matter how much I try to take care of those tops, they just get clogged up. So I'm going to add some yellow on this one. <clears throat> so, and the other way is many times, and I'm, not, I'm not sure what color that's going to come out with the blue and the yellow together, but now see, I could use that in a piece of art because it's so pretty. Um, <coughs> I squished it together, brought in some of the greens. So I will take this and just lay it over top of something to let it dry. And it will dry since it's cheesecloth and it's thin. It won't be long before it dries. So I'm just gonna lay this out and let this dry for a while. All right, so here we go on this painting. Let's get started. I think what I'm going to do is just get started by adding some of my papers, and then I will probably go up into the sky and add some blue, maybe a little bit of yellow. But I want this kind of like a stormy day, so I'm not too mad at the fact that it's dark and I could just leave it for the mood. An abstract landscape does not have to be an exact portrayal 
of um, a true-to-life landscape. That's the beauty of it. So here it cuts off, so I'm just going to tear. And I kind of like the white, the white edge there. And I can use this in another place, or what I may do is bring some of this blue in. So let's get our gloss gel. And this is heavy. So <clears throat> we have to make sure that we really put enough. This gloss gel is like your glue. So I'm just going to put plenty here. And once you have your pieces made, placing your pieces and gluing this, gluing your pieces down is what's going to take the longest amount of time. So I'm just going to And this is going to take a while. I'm going to have to put some heavy stuff on here. It to stay glued down. But I'm going to go ahead while I have this glue wet and add this piece because I love this piece. I'm going to leave a little bit of the white, almost like the sea water is um, <clears throat> poking through there. That's going to take a while to glue down. Um, let me bring in, I'm just loving this blue. So I could either have that or I could have it both places. I may, because I think I'm going to have this up here as like my sail ship, sailboat. <clears throat> and let me just add. Some of this really beautiful blue. Let me just add it down here. Like I said, I'm going to have to do something, put something down on there. And then I'm going to add, this is kind of like my rocks. I'm going to tuck that underneath there. <clears throat> And let me just add my boat up here, and then I will let this dry, put something on top, and bring you back. But i got to let this dry for a while. And I wanted to add, I think I'm going to add a little bit of the, you cut this. a real you know there's different ways to tear your paper depending on if you want the white edge to show yes yeah, so I think I like that I'm going to go ahead and put that on So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some heavy things on here and um, I will be back shortly when this is dried down enough. Okay, this is um, 
somewhat dry. So um, I went off to paint a commission. Um, so some of my paint got over here. Um, this is still wet, but I think I'm going to go ahead and layer this into my painting here because I like the fact that it almost looks like a boat sail. And uh, I got some paint left from my commission. I'm going to kind of just add that in. Let's see. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and dry this. Now, since I have some of the lime green down here, I'm going to get some of my green gold and put some of that. And you can never see the colors of my bottles. The lids are always clogged because, I don't know, the golden tops for the high flows. I wish there was... I'm sure it's use your air. I don't know if anyone else has trouble with them getting clogged, but um, I'm going to take, and I don't particularly like the color right out of the bottle. So I'm going to mix a little bit of the black with it. So I came out with that color. It's kind of like a green gold kind of matches. And I'm just going to kind of lightly splash the color of that. Couple places there. Okay. So, let's see. When you have abstracts, they can be what you want them to be. But I know it bothers a lot of people. I'm adding a little bit of the indigo blue. And I'm going to kind of put it under the boat. almost like a wave that it is sitting on. I have some scraffito up here for no rhyme or reason. I know the sky does not have scraffito, but mine does. this very weathered 
There we go. I still don't have the gold on here, and I still have some places I have to work on with the gluing down. But this is turning into an almost weathered, very weathered board. And I'm thinking someone that has uh, a boathouse um, might enjoy a painting like this. I know exactly who this painting would go well within their decor. Exactly. Okay, so let me continue with the gloss and I will show you I still have to touch it up. Those are those are things you're going to touch up as you go. I'll show you how I incorporate that into my piece. And I hope it's not too soon. I would normally wait till this is a little drier. But what I would use, and I've used on my other pieces, is an adhesive spray. And it's acid free. So I'm going to pick this up since I have blown dried it. And I'm going to add some adhesive spray. And I will add something on the top of this also. But I'm going to tack this down. Let that dry.
right, here's the finished piece. I've popped the uh, card, um, the um, canvas, the hard canvas back into the same frame. I painted the frame. It's a very rough textured frame. I uh, spray painted it gold to kind of go with the gold that I put in my painting. I have adhered all my pieces with the gel medium. I've um, blended in like this was kind of sticking out um, and I added a swatch of paint to kind of, you know, you never want it to be like, you know, this plop sitting on top. It's kind of fun to blend your pieces in so you don't know when you're looking from the top maybe what pieces are underneath. Uh, this was ad adhered with the adhesive and then I used some gel medium to stick down any edges and then I used a archival uh, finish spray to finish off any of the um, pieces of uh, the oil pastel. And then I used a matte medium on this to just give it an overall uh, coating. And when I sell a piece like this, I do talk to the fact that it has material in here. Um, you know, so they know that it's going to be a raised piece but it does have a coating, a matte finish on it, a nice, um, you know, finish that will keep it protected. But I love all the different, um, since these are all handmade, there's nothing out there that is um, going to compare to it. So it turned out to me um, just really um, fun and I love the piece. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. And um, please subscribe for more and uh, ring the bell. And uh, they say that will let you know when I upload new videos. And um, give me a thumbs up so that my um, algorithm, I guess, on the YouTube channel helps me continue to grow. So thank you very much for watching. The main thing is, is I hope you had fun and I hope you learned something. And I'd love to entertain any questions that you have.